Hello everybody, Nefertiti here, and wow, it has been a very, very long time since I actually produced a YouTube video. I've been trying to use the shorts to at least show that I'm not dead, I'm still active and everything, but I, there's been just so much chaos going on in my real life and work and taxes and adult stuff that I haven't had time to produce an actual YouTube video in so long, and I feel terrible for that. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate your patience with me in this matter, because I'm so slow at producing content. I'm gonna try to get better at this, hopefully soon, so that I can be able to produce content on a more frequent basis. But I figured a good way to do this and kind of jump back into doing art, because it's been so long, would be to work on a character redesign that's been a long time coming, and that being for my character, Nero. Nero is one of my oldest characters I have. I think he was initially conceptualized and brought to life back in 2003, and his very first ref sheet was sometime around 2005. Uh, my art has really evolved. Like, <laughs> this, this was like my best art I had ever done. I remember being so proud of that headshot, being like, mm, this right here, this is the best. I will never improve beyond this point because this is the best. I have really evolved over time. Keep practicing, because trust me, uh, practice is so important. I cannot stress the importance of how important it is to practice all the time when it comes to artwork. And for the most part, Nero's design has remained the same for like the last 20 years. The main difference being that over time, you'll notice he goes from just being bright yellow to kind of orange and then at one point he got his signature lightning bolts that his father has because all of the dragons in my world, when they reach adulthood, they gain some kind of metamorphosis that changes their body. And in Nero's case, it made his mane become more of a teal color and be brighter and more fluorescent looking. And he gained his lightning bolts, which is a hereditary trait from his father, which is a good segue to talking about Nero's father at the time, which for the longest time, Nero's father was Voltaire from the Legend of Spyro series. <laughs> I literally just loved Voltaire so much, so I grabbed him and just took him from the Spyro universe and plumped him into my world and was like, yeah, he's never been associated with Spyro. Uh, he has nothing to do with Spyro. He doesn't know who Spyro is. He's just, he exists in my world as this independent version of himself. This is not a good thing to do. Please don't do this. This creates so many conflicts and issues with character design and character copyright, more importantly. Don't be like me. Learn from my mistakes. I can't remember when, but I did eventually remove Voltaire as his father, but it it's one of those things where you can see where the inspiration was drawn from. There are certain elements to his character design, and it ties into his backstory a little bit. He even references his father in my comic where he's fighting Dragon, and you he literally says, like, I think it's Dragon who insults him and expects more of him because he's like, oh, you're supposed to be the son of Voltaire, the electricity guardian? You're a joke. And then Nero just gets angry and tries to fight him and show that he, he is cool dude and he does cool dude things, but he just gets absolutely owned by Dragon. So it's... uh. It's a real testament to the ages that shows how long I've been drawing this character and how much he's evolved over time. The current part I'm working on are his underbelly scales. This has been a feature of Nero since the beginning, and I've always described his underbelly scales as being harder than diamond, which is a bizarre mutation that occurs in very few dragons in my world, and it's basically just instead of their body scales being the main way they protect themselves. Some dragons will grow these extra large scales that are just impossibly sturdy and thick and powerful. And for the redesign for him, I decided to make them a little bit more inspired by eyelash viper scales because I liked how spiny they were and I felt like it lent itself well to the electricity element. But it also made the scales larger so that they stood out more against the rest of his scaly body. I also changed the design so that the blue doesn't just go for these big scales, it doesn't just go from his cheek to his nose. Instead, this design element now carries over across his entire body, bordering this red scale 
thing, and I think it looks a lot better this way. Nero, as a character, is very inquisitive and loves to research things. He's very methodical with his research, and he will go above and beyond to factually make things appear in his journal as being full researched stuff. That's just, that's what he does. And his prominent role in my roleplay group that used to exist at the time, which was called the League of Dragons, uh, <laughs> he was one of the mentors there, and his assignments taught cooperation and field research. So a lot of the missions that he would send other people's characters on, because it was like this big roleplay group thing where I would write one big huge story part, and then the next person whom that story was for would write their part of what their character did on the adventure following certain parameters that they had to stick between when they wrote their story. And then I would respond with the next part and assign their next quest. And it would just back and forth, back and forth the entirety of the time to create these unique one-off stories that people could engage with. And when they reached a certain level within this group, they went through their guardian ceremony where they got special accommodations and I just drew a picture of their character and their mentor because there were four mentors. Each one of my four main characters led a, a group and Nero's group was the guardian force. So they would go through all these different changes and everything and when they finally got to their end goal they would have a graduation ceremony and then they would move into the more advanced, higher risk, and more intricately detailed stories that I would write. And that was the next stage of this big roleplay that we did. And it was a lot of fun for a long time. But there did come a point where my work just got to be too much. And I didn't have the time that I wanted to invest in these kind of stories anymore. Because I didn't just want to half-ass them. I wanted to really pour my all into these stories and make them fun to read and fun to engage with for the people participating. So the League of Dragons ended up getting put on the back burner for so long that it died out. But it was a good a good part of my past and it definitely shows with DeviantArt my DeviantArt going through this looking for old images of Nero to like refresh my brain because it's been so long since I did my comic and drew him like oh god I can't even remember I think it's actually been almost five or six years since I've drawn Nero which is insane to think it's been that long I think I did like one sketch a while ago but that was literally it other than that, I haven't drawn him in ages because I just haven't had the time. I've been more focused on fursuit work and stuff and less on my comic and things, which my comic is still available on my DeviantArt. If you want to read it, I'll put a link in the description so you can go check it out. You can see my art evolve when I started it in 2008, I think, is when it officially started. And... It goes from like 2008 to I think 2013 was the last time I updated it. Maybe. I... No, I think it was more past that. I can't remember. It's It's been too long. The comic has just been kind of sitting dead in the water for a while because I wanted to revive it. And I intended to do it kind of like these story narratives that you've seen here on YouTube. Like through the fire and... <laughs> through the fire. The Fire and the Phoenix, which is an amazing one by Blaze Animates. I want to do something kind of like that. Uh, I recently watched My Pride, which I understand all of the, the stigma around that. And I'm not getting into it. I'm just stating that I watched it. And I like the way that genre of storytelling is done. It's something I want to do and I've wanted to do for a while where you get voice actors to voice the characters. And then it's not 100% animated, but there is subtle animation in certain areas and that's the kind of thing that I want to do. I want to make one of those but for my comic because I think it would lend itself really really well to this kind of storytelling and being able to convey the story the way I want. I wanted to do that back in like oh god I can't even remember I think it was like like 2018 or 2019 at this point. I even hosted voice acting auditions so that I could have people step up and be able to voice the characters the way that I wanted them and the project just kind of got put on the back burner for so long that it got cancelled I do want to redo it at some point I just I don't know when I'm going to be able to do that so for the time being it's just on the back burner I've gone off on a tangent and started rambling about other stuff so I'm going to just directly jump right back into talking about Nero 
his character design, I wanted to slightly tweak a couple of his markings and colors here, and you'll see me struggle in a little bit when I'm trying to figure out how to lay down certain new colors and things. But in doing his redesign, I wanted to look back at a lot of his old artwork and see how different artists had interpreted him to see if there was any elements I wanted to take for his new design. I found a lot of really old artwork I did. Uh, I have these 3D models that I did where <laughs> I sculpted the 3D model in Sculptress, exported it being completely bald, and then just opened up Photoshop and rendered a blurry thing of color that somewhat resembled fur. That That's how I rendered his fur. And it's hilarious now that I look back at it because having done VR chat models and stuff, I'm starting to learn more about Blender and how Blender works and how you render fur in general. And it just, it's so silly that I did it like that and was like, yeah, this looks totally fine. There's not a problem at all with rendering the fur like this. Looks more like his head's on fire. It's just, it's so bad looking. <laughs> My artwork also went through this funny evolution where every so often I would do hybrid pictures where I would draw part of it traditionally with colored pencil and then I would import it into Photoshop and add digital enhancements to the image. <laughs> and Nero it has a very, very long neck in this piece. And this was a thing that I did profusely with my characters for a very long time because several pieces that I commissioned also featured this crazy, stupid long neck. Like there was this one that I commissioned. His neck is just giraffe neck proportions. Um, there's a couple others where he's got this crazy long bendy neck. And then you get ones like this one here, where I commissioned the line art and then colored it myself. It was kind of supposed to be like Legend of Spyro-esque, I think. And his neck is just non-existent. But I would use these images for reference when other artists would commission, or I'd like go to commission other artists or get gift art or something. So there's these ones by a friend of mine, ML Divers, who's like, this does not justify her current style of art. Her art has improved so much. These pictures are so old. But again, here is the, the little short nubby neck of my Nero boy. Uh, there was a while I tried to draw him having, like, a Spyro style. And I think that was mostly because his father was Voltaire. And I tried to mash him into that genre and make him fit. But it doesn't fit. It just looks weird. And speaking of weird... Uh, when I watched Turning Red and I saw the scene where Mei, Mei is literally drawing the, 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 the spicy pictures of the boy from the Mini Mart, I was immediately like, oh my god, this is me. Because look at this. Look at this. I drew this. This is what I drew in high school. If my mother had opened my sketchbook and saw this, she'd be like, what are you doing? Why are those dragons making out? And I'd be like, no, mom, the dragons are just love. They're not, they're not doing the deed. They're just passionately making out on the grass. Don't mind the fact that Nefertiti has five big spikes on her back that are totally going to bury in the dirt. No, that's fine. <laughs> I had disregarded so much when I drew that. I was just kind of like, ew. It's fine, it doesn't need to make sense, it's Durgan's in love, and I'm edgy teenager. <laughs> but this continued, this trend continued quite a lot. I, I did other, like, romantic pictures between Nefertiti and Nero that were kind of e. Like, you can tell when I was still learning digital art because those colors... I do tend to saturate my work a lot, but oh my god, the saturation in these pieces is ridiculous. And even in some of these other pieces, like the Dark Injection I did of him, I remember being so proud of it. And to this day, I am still super proud of how this turned out. But the, the design itself, like, it is so busy. It's so hard to see what's going on. I wish I would have added more of a pop border to it. Those were a fun thing I used to do. Uh, I drew him as an anthro a couple times by referencing like an anime base pose. I can't even remember which one. It was so long ago. <laughs> it's literally just a dude with a dragon's head. <laughs> oh yeah, early 2000s. That's like the, the 2010 to 2011 era, I think, when I was drawing that kind of stuff. I drew him as a human one time. Um, I've drawn him 
in a couple different styles before. I've done multiple ref sheets of him. I even made sculptures of him. Like, I have this sculpture here, which was the second version of him that I did, and I remember being so insanely proud of the fact that his wings had quote-unquote ball joints. They really weren't ball joints. Like, they didn't pose at all. They constantly just flopped over. And this was the first sculpture I think I ever made that had an armature in it. Up until this point, my sculptures, I literally just sculpted the entire thing, laid it down on the baking sheet, baked the clay, and then hot glued all the pieces together. <laughs> There's an older sculpture of him that, if I find it, I'll put a picture on screen to show you what it looked like, because when I was hunting down all these pictures for this video, I couldn't find it, so it might be buried in one of my DeviantArt archives, and that's why I couldn't find it. But if I find it, I'll put it on screen to show how bad it looked, because that's how I used to make sculptures. That's what they looked like back then. And this is what they look like now. And it's really wild to see just the evolution that my work has gone through and how much I've learned and improved. I did a couple other smaller little model magic sculptures of him, I believe. Uh, if I find those, I'll put a picture of one so that you can see what it looks like. I used to do them in sets. And the, just, again, sculpting each limb individually and then sticking them all together once they were dried because I didn't understand how armature sculpting worked. I wanted everything to be posable, and it's just so funny to look back at his character design and see how much he has really improved and changed over the years. I think his redesign looks a lot better, and hopefully his design looks more unique now. He's not just the same basic yellow and blue and red dragon as before. He looks more unique and more iconic to his own design. Painting the fire here was really fun. This particular fire is something special. This is his soul fire, which is an element special to my world that I'm sure other people have done something similar, but within my universe of dragons, every dragon has a very special ability in addition to their element. Nero is an electricity dragon, so he has electric breath. And because his electric breath is so fast and hot, it usually comes out purple just like normal heat lightning does in our world. But his soul fire is different. Soul fire is essentially the dragon manifests and uses their very essence of their soul, their fiber of their being, what makes them who they are, their inner heart. It is quite literally a part of them that they can manifest and turn into some sort of breath weapon. But it's not always destructive. For example, Nefertiti's soul fire can hurt as explosion versions or it can heal if used as a mist. There are two different ways that it can be used. In Nero's case, his is specifically damage dealing. It causes like massive explosions when it impacts anything, similar to how electrical fires will spark out. It's less fire and more electricity, but it makes a very high-pitched crackling sound whenever he uses it, and it emits a small EMP pulse so it'll shut down any kind of technology that he happens to be near whenever he uses it. It can cause lasting burns and can even paralyze limbs if hit directly with it. So I really wanted to convey how powerful it is with this little headshot here. This is something I like to do in my ref sheets now, and I felt like this was a really good way of portraying the energy that his soul fire emits. And now it's time to just fill in all of his little info blocks for his ref sheet so that people who read his ref can learn more about him as a character. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to take a minute to talk about future plans. I want to go back and eventually do the graphic novel narrated version of my comic, just because it's something I've wanted to do for a long time, but I have no idea when I'm going to be able to start this. It's something I'd like to start sometime the end of this year, if not the beginning of next. And I do want to be able to focus on doing more commissions and stuff and pumping out and pumping out more tutorials and stuff for you so that you can see more of my work and things. But I also really want to get into live streaming again. And when it comes to videos like these, I don't know if people like listening to me narrate and talk over them or if instead you want me to just put some non-copyright music in the background and just 
put it on as I do a speed paint. I don't do speed paints very often, so I rely on your feedback as viewers to figure out how exactly I'm going to approach this. So any recommendations or suggestions you may have, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I always read all my comments, even if I don't respond to them every single time, because there's a lot of them. Uh, I do want to start doing, like, Q&A videos. I want to maybe try live streaming here on YouTube, because I've streamed on TikTok and I've streamed on Instagram. But it's been a very, very long time since I streamed on YouTube for a couple various reasons. The biggest being the copyright crackdown is terrible. And videos don't tend to perform well if there's no music in the background. I'm still going to try and work on getting videos out more frequently. And hopefully once my work settles down a little bit, I'll be able to produce at least one video a week is what I'm going to strive for, if not every other week. But thank you for bearing with me during the time when I'm still trying to figure this out and get things steady. So, I'm done. Here is Nero. He's complete. He's finished. He's glorious. And my wonderful electricity boy is ready to grace the world once again. At some point, I want to go back and do the other two of my main four characters, because Nefertiti already has her current redesign ref sheet that's up to date. Now Nero has his... I want to touch up Shinito's. Shinito needs so much work. I, I'm planning a complete overhaul on his design. And then his brother Karakamuni also needs one because I want to revitalize all their designs and make them match my current abilities so that if and when I choose to pursue the graphic novel project, I can do that with up-to-date character designs so that everything matches the way it should. I'm... Also, not going to do a Patreon outro screen for this video just because I'm physically and mentally exhausted because of everything going on in my life right now. I do want to take a moment at least just to thank my patrons for all their extended support and their incredible amounts of patience. I know I've been really, really bad about posting my Freebase Fridays as well as just content in general to my Patreon. I'm trying to get better at it. I'm just really, really bad at withholding content for Patreon only. I, I I post, like, anytime I finish anything, I'm like, I'm gonna post it right now. It can't wait. I will post it to every social media, even if it's just a work in progress. And I need to start reserving certain things for Patreon so that there's a reason for people to, like, go there and support me other than just to support my work and want to see more of it. My Patreon at the $5 tier or higher also gets you access to my Discord server. It's a home. If you want to join it, awesome. We're going to welcome you with open arms. But you do also need to bear in mind that you need to be at least 13 to have a Discord server and join Discord servers. That is Discord's terms of service. Not mine, but I do enforce them. Because it, it is very important. If you are under 13, you should not be joining Discord servers. But with all of that kind of sour note out of the way, thank you to my patrons for supporting me. Thank you to everybody who watches my content and enjoys what I do. I promise I'm going to try getting videos out more frequently. And coming up very, very soon here, I'm going to be releasing the very first episode of my podcast, which I've asked my patrons and close friends to help me out on. That is going to be a very long video. I'm anticipating a runtime of at least an hour, 45 minutes to two hours, depending on how things go. It will be adult content, not, not safe for work in general, but mature audiences. That's a better term. Mature audiences is what my podcast is dedicated towards. So just keep that in mind. If that's something that you want to see is a little bit more mature content from me, the podcast is definitely going to be what you want. If you keep on watching the little silly fun things, you can check out my TikTok. Yes, I'm back on TikTok again. My sister convinced me to come back. My old account is gone. TikTok nuked it, so it's gonzo. But I have restarted and I'm still posting videos and stuff and making fun little skits and things. The biggest thing I can advise, because there's a lot of fake accounts, always, always, always go to my website, artbynefertiti.com forward slash follow dash me. You can see all of my social medias that are actually me. All the accounts that are actually me are listed there. If the account is not listed there, it's probably not me. It's probably a fake. So with all that, uh, my tummy is rumbling something fierce. I'm very hungry. I'm going to go feed myself, take a bath, read a book, and then get back to work. So as always, I hope that you have an absolutely wonderful day and a fantastic life. <laughs>